We're going to review some alternatives for uh, uh, bond proposal with the November 2020 election. Right. And just do an overview of uh, our role again. Financial advisor is also known as municipal advisor. And we're regulated by the SEC and the MSRB, that's the municipal school, municipal securities rulemaking board. And we work um, closely with school administrators in coordinating the, the issuance of the bonds before the election. We consider all the different alternatives and, and help you narrow the scope on, on deciding on how much to go out for and what the millage impact is. And then after the election, we, we work with the group to um, bring those bonds to the market where we sell them for the first time. And that's usually to a bank or a financial institution that uh, purchases the bonds. It's almost like a uh, mortgage where the school district receives the funds on closing date and those bonds exist in the secondary market and they can be retraded. So in that group, we work with the bond council, the underwriter, the architect, construction manager, and school administrators to help decide all the different alternatives and scenarios for, for creating this bond issue and what the millage impact's going to be. Uh, so then on to the next slide. If it's more exciting from here. Uh, uh, RJ, uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Okay, uh, so on this next slide is your taxable value growth history. So voted school bonds are, are covered by, that means the bond payments, the principal and interest on those bonds are covered by debt levy tax receipts. And the debt levy is a, a portion of the property taxes. And, and so we look at the entire taxable value for, for the entire school district. And, and this is impressive because here we have your taxable value growth history. And if we look at the adjusted taxable value growth, we're over 6% in the last two years. And, and uh, so that, that tells me your community is thriving. Um, you do see the recession years where you see the negative growth, um, you know, from 2009 through 2014. So, uh, I know there's, there's talk about us being in a recession currently, and uh, hopefully we're not gonna see negative growth in your taxable value, but it could happen. Uh, any questions so far? Um, I, I will say that uh, most school bonds are state qualified, which means you, we have to go through a process with Department of Treasury, Michigan Department of Treasury, and there are certain guidelines that they use in how we could project taxable value growth forward. And one is that the percent change in taxable value for the next five years can be up to your five-year historical average, 4.55%. And the percent change in taxable value for beyond five years can be no more than your 20-year average, but not more than 3% and not less than 0%. So um, for, for these projections, I, I feel somewhat uh, conservative in using like a 1% growth for 2021, a 3% growth for uh, the next four years. And then we have to use the, uh, we have to use a 20 year average for beyond six years. So that's 0.36%. And, and that, that's the allowable, or that's the tax value projection that I'm using, but we really can't go up higher than 0.36% in year six and out because we're limited by Department of Treasury. Uh, so, so we can move on to the next slide. And, and these, these are just um, examples. Mr. Um, Knott. Mr. Yeah. Knott, this is Barbara Castle. Um, I'd like to ask a question at this point. Okay. Before you go any further, can you give can you give us a brief overview before you go any further as to why we are looking at this at this time? What does it mean on a lower level? I mean, this is very high level, very technical. I find it confusing, even though I've looked at it. Okay. If you could explain what's happening next year, 
what position that puts our board, our community, our superintendent, our overall school district, and our taxpayers. Tell, would you explain what's coming up, why we're talking about this, and the fact that this was not a board or district initiated movement at this time, if you will. I'd be happy to. So uh, maybe I should change the order of my slides. Uh, so Angel- I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I should have maybe waited. No, uh, you raise a very good point, and, and I should just uh, start with the reason why we're looking at a bond issue at this time. So please. if you could please, please flip to uh, slide number six. There we go. And, and this is gonna tie into to the answer to your question, Barbara. RJ, hey, hold on, someone is unmuted. Um, and they're just making noises. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone's muted. Okay. So the district levies for your bonds and, and your school bond loan fund loan, that's with the July levy and, and also with the December levy. And here is a millage projection before additional bonding. And, and this shows us that your debt millage has been 7.76 mills going up to 2020. But as in 2021, a, a key event is going to happen, and that is you're making your last repayment on a loan with the state. The school district has been participating in the school bond loan fund program, and, and many school districts participate in the school bond loan fund program. And what that means is that when you've been loving your millage, that wasn't enough to cover your bond payments. So you had an ongoing loan with the state and you were in borrowing mode. But in the last few years, the district has entered repayment mode. And that means that the millage that you were loving, 7.76 mills was more than what was needed to cover your bond payments. And so the school district used the excess tax receipts to start repaying on your loan to the state. And in 2021, the district is making the last loan repayment. And, and so there is a big drop off of 4.81 mills projected going from the July, December, 2020 levy to the uh, July and December, 2021 levy. So there, there it is, the, the millage is projected to drop from 7.76 mills to 2.96 mills. And the district could issue a new bond. And, and as long as that bond is, is sold and delivered before July of 2021, the district could levy for the new bonds in July of 2021. And it's possible, one scenario is that you replace the 4.8 mils falling off on your existing debt with 4.8 mils for a new bond issue, which will make it a net no mill increase. Mr. Give us, R RJ, give us an example of where you're giving taxpayer tax uh, payers a break. Remember we talked about the different scenarios. You're showing the, the yeah. four, can you talk about the others? Uh, sure. Well, let's see if uh, if the mills were to go down by by two mills. So let's say you you had an example where your mills go from seven point seven six to five point seven six, and that's a two mill drop. Then some taxpayer, actually taxpayers would receive a, a millage decrease in what they owe. And in terms of dollars, I'll give you an example. Tax, how much you pay in taxes is based on taxable value. And that's estimated to be half your market value. So the easiest example would be, if, if your home had a $200,000 market value and a $100,000 taxable value, then then a two mil drop in millage would save that taxpayer $200 a year. 
Mr. Knox, yeah. this is this is Barbara again. I have a question. Okay. The particular mills that are uh, scheduled to, for lack of a better term, that are scheduled to fall off, if you will, next year. Um, when did when did we start? When did we first have this millage levied on the taxpayers? What year was that, and how long have we been paying this back? Uh, okay, so your last bond issue, if we look at slide five, the slide before this, was in 2013. 2013. And, and uh, I, I have to do a little bit of research to find out if the school district was already in the school bond loan fund program at the time those bonds were issued. I understand. So we could have been in this a very, very long time. This is nothing new this is um this is just some a financial thing that we have to deal with to make sure that we're fair to the taxpayers and we come to them with a good plan so that they'll be able to make an educated vote as to whether we're going to continue this and if we're going to continue it at what level based on your last example we could go down two mills so yes. The taxpayer, we could come up with options to present to the taxpayer, and this is the beginning of us doing that. In other words, you're going to, if we let you ever finish, you're going to finish with your presentation to give us a foundation, and then we have time between now and, again, this is going to drop off in 2021. What month? Um, well, the district levies taxes in July. And okay. not, so the new bonds would have, if there were new bonds, they'd have to be issued uh, before July 1. And, and so the district could have an election in, in November of 2020 or, or May of 2021. Okay. So, you've, so you've, got, you've come to us to give us the background we need because we need time, it sounds like to me, to number one, have meetings with the taxpayers, make presentations, maybe get uh, questionnaires, input on uh, different avenues of information should come into us so that we as a board can use those, um, that input to make the right, the, what I would say, I don't know, I say the right decision, to make an educated decision as to what would be appropriate to put on the, the ballot for the taxpayers to vote on. And this decision would be solely up to the taxpayers of Madison Heights for, for this, for the Madison district. It wouldn't be something the Mr. board would be deciding. Mr. Abdullahad or Ms. Zott, may I, after Barb is finished, I'd like to maybe- No, I'm done. I'm okay. done, thank, thank you. But the, the thing I wanna correct Barb on is you keep saying taxpayers. Taxpayers, I mean, there's a, most of the people, I think not most, but a lot of the people that are gonna vote on this are not taxpayers. Homeowners are taxpayers, when, when I believe, right? Or in business owners. So I guess to back up to where Barb's original question was, Mr. Abdulhad, maybe you would, would be the one to answer. What, 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 what do we need this money for? What, what would it be, you know, why are we doing this now? Um, so, Mr. Pittman, we're, we're not doing anything. So at this time, this no, is strictly right. informational. Uh, so in November, we're not doing anything. But bec I just, I took it, it was so complex for me to understand. Um, and I just thought that if RJ came in to present us what, a mill equates to how much drops off, when it drops off, and and showing us some options and allowing us further discussion to see, um, to assess what our needs are and to see if this is something that in in the next, this upcoming year, that's something that the school board is interested in exploring. This is nothing other than informational right now. We are not doing anything else uh, at this time. Okay. I have, I have one as well. I just want to know, um, I, I heard the gentleman say that something about the November ballot. Is this going to be something on the ballot? No. 
No. All right. Did he, didn't he say that? Didn't he say the 20? Uh, RJ, you, you want to chime in on this, RJ? Sure. The, the example I gave is for a November 2020 vote, but if there were a vote, and if it were no mill increase, that then it, your, your best chance for a significant amount of money at a no mill increase is with either a November 2020 vote or a May of 2021 vote. So you're just using those as an example. You're just using those as examples. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I definitely don't want to see nothing on November 2020 ballot. Because that is I enough time to get with the taxpayers and the, the people in the city to voice their opinions on this. <clears throat> but okay, go, go ahead, Beth. I'm done. Okay. RJ, um, I have a question. You said that um, we would have to, something about July 1st, we would have to decide July 1st. No, the bonds would have to be issued by July 1st. It would Next. have to be ballot in either November of 20 or May of 2021. So July next year. is next year. July 1st is next year, excuse me. That, that's correct. All right. July 1 of 2021. RJ, I think in your presentation, you, you're going to speak to what uh, each mill equates to to show them, you know, um, they're not trying, we're not exploring maximum, but if you could just ex show them <laughs> what one mill equates to, two mills, three mills, um, in whatever examples you have. I'm not sure if you had that in your presentation. I'd be happy to. If you can back up two slides then. Two slides, one, yep. two. And, and this is just an overview, and this is just a range that, that I chose. And, and how much the district bonds for depends on what your needs are. And I don't know what your needs are. It will take an architect, construction manager to maybe to show you some needs, and then you have to just prioritize prioritize your needs and decide which needs you're going to cover with bond proceeds. And, and so that's why we run several different scenarios and we do it based on either a range of bond amounts or a range of project amounts. There is a difference between how much bond proceeds can be used for the project because of something we call capitalized interest and also bond issuance costs, which cover the fees for the professionals involved. Uh, so this is just a, an example of the estimated bonding capacity at the no at a two mil decrease is a bond amount of fifteen point four million, of which about fifteen million seventeen thousand could be used for the project, and that would lower the mills from seven point seven six to five point seven six. And, and another example. The bonding capacity at a one mil decrease, so it's going from 7.76 to 6.76, and, and that bonding capacity is 20.7 million, of which approximately 20.2 million would be used for the project. And then another scenario is um, having a seven six mil decrease that brings the from 7.76 mils to seven mils. And, and um, what's special about seven mils exactly is that's the minimum amount of millage to participate in the school bond loan fund program, like the district has been participating in at 7.76. So you get some like additional bonding capacity if the district levies at least seven mils. And, and that scenario is 22.5 million bond amount the estimated amount for the project, 22212 And um, this other scenario is a no mill increase. The district just continues at 7.76, but you continue levying that millage uh, for, for several years. And, um, and you go up maybe as high as 25.9 million in bond amount, of which uh, 25 million 579 thousand could be used for the project. Now, now these are just estimates. And what what's interesting though is is we have the term of the bonds shown. 26 years, three months. 27 years, three months. 28 years, three months. 
depending on the size of the bond amount, we might shorten up the bond term. <clears throat> um, and your number of years of school bond loan fund participation may be less. So for example, you might have a, a 20, $22 million bond issue. You might still be at seven mils, but you won't be in the school bond loan fund at seven mils for the entire 28 years. You might be at seven mils for 25 years and then have the millage start to fall off for the last three years. So, um, I, RJ, didn't you have a scenario where you had less terms, less less years, plus a significant mill drop? Two examples, more than a two mill drop. I didn't you have an example of a eleven million bond that was prepared now. Okay, no. okay. But I will say, for example, you have a two mill drop, and I. Uh, and have a bond term less than 26 years, maybe you have a 20 year bond issue, <laughs> but the bonding capacity might only be $11 million. So in that instance, even though it's a two mil decrease with a 20 year bond issue, you could get more money for the same amount of millage by extending it from a 20 year bond issue to a 26 year, three month bond issue. Okay, sorry, sorry, we're taking a lot of time if you want to continue with your presentation. Um, I, I will also mention that part of the bond proposal, let me describe what that bond proposal will look like. It, it would be for, for uh, Mad Madison schools um, to have a bond issue in a not to exceed amount of X. It's formed in, in a uh, question, so uh, it'll be shall Madison District Public Schools issue a bond amount not to exceed X dollars. And then it'll say for the purpose of, and then there's an indented paragraph describing what that bond issue would be used for. And, and that's essentially the question. Um, now below that, it says for informational purposes only, and then it contains a lot of other information that's just an estimate. And, and part of that is the estimated millage in the first year for the new bonds. And in this case, let's say uh, for table 2020, table 22, for 15.4 million, the estimated millage in the first year for the new bonds, 2.8 mils. And, and that's a two mil decrease from the, uh, from the current levy, but the, the uh, first year millage will be 2.8. There's a difference between the millage change from 2020 and the first year millage on ballot. And the difference between those numbers is about 4.8 mils because 4.8 mils is falling off from the existing debt. So another way to- So if we do nothing, RJ, if we do nothing, uh, when does it fall off? It falls off with the July, uh, July and December of 2021 levy. So it falls off. Yep. And, and another way of looking at this is there's 2.8 mils for the new bonds, uh, of which 4.8 mils is falling off your existing debt, which actually result in a two mil decrease. And we can see this with the stacked bar chart, which I have uh, a little later. Right. So just for discussion purposes, I've included several examples here, two of which require school by loan fund participation. Um, and, and if you'd like to uh, flip, flip through a couple slides, here we have your existing debt, and here we have the millage projection before additional bonding that I already went over, shows that the millage goes from 7.76 to 2.96. And, and that's largely because you're repaying your loan with the state. You're making your last loan repayment. That 2.96 is just enough to cover your bond payments, 724,874. And, and uh, the district has 
no other loan to repay other than your bond payments that year. <clears throat> so now we can move on to the next slide. Uh, on this next slide, I hit some columns to make this a little easier to read. Th this is the millage projection with table 22, the $15.4 million bond issue. And so on the left, we have your total bond payments, existing debt and the proposed debt. Then we have your change in your taxable value. As you take your taxable value and, and you multiply it by the millage and divide by a thousand, that's how much you get in tax receipts. So that's that's how we determine how much the, the millage is. Uh, 5.76 mills. So it may be uh, a 26 year bond issue, but you're projected to be at your highest millage maybe for the first eight or nine years. If you look at that column called Mills Levy Qualified Debt, it goes from 7.76 mills, 5.76 mills, then after a while it falls off. So the columns that are missing make this a little more legible. Are, are the principal columns. So just like with a mortgage, we have to pay off some principal each year and we can decide how much principal we, we pay off here. And, and I, in this example, I have like your highest millage for uh, like the first eight or nine years and then the millage starts to fall off. So this doesn't take up your whole bonding capacity. You still have room in the future um, at any time, really, to have another bond issue, millage, maybe at a millage increase. Uh, can, can, can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I hear is everything that we can do with a no mill uh, tax increase, right? What happens if we don't go for a bond when these drop off? Is that not a savings to the taxpayers, the property owners, and the business owners? There is. In fact, mm -hmm. the mills are projected to drop by 4.8 uh, 4 mills. Right. So, and, and so that alone is a decrease in, in taxes. Right. That, that's something I don't think you've, you've really talked about. And that's, you know... That's what's going to be the difficult sell is, you know, <laughs> we've got the voters here that we're saying we're going to keep, you could, your taxes could go down, but we could keep them where they are if you give us this bond. Now, well, I, what, what my question will be, and that'd be for us to determine if we ever decide to go through with this is what do we need the bond for? That's for us to decide. I understand that. But I just want everyone, I don't know if they all understand that if we don't do anything, property owners' taxes and business owners' taxes will go down. Uh, I, I will like to add to that, and that is that some of these examples still have a millage decrease. It's just not going down as much. So instead yeah. of going down 4.8 4 mills, it goes down 2 mills. That, yeah. Now, school districts are limited in how they can fund capital projects in Michigan. And... and one of the most common ways to, to have a significant amount of money to fund capital projects is with the bond issue. And many times we update millage projections every year uh, for several reasons. One is to make sure you're loving enough of mills to cover your bond payments for the coming year. Another reason is to see where the millage is headed in the future, because if there is a um, opportunity to offset the millage increase with a new bond with millage decrease from millage falling off your existing debt, that is a window in time opportunity. Right. And, and yeah. there, there may be needs at your district and that's like you said, up to you to determine what and whether or not to take advantage of this opportunity. But the, the passage rate for a bond issue is greater if there's a millage decrease or if there is a no mill increase. Uh, yep. compared to a bond proposal if there is a millage increase. So let me say, what, what if you had a need and, and the district had to have a $10 million bond issue and your millage for your existing debt weren't going to fall off and it would have been a one mill increase? Well, right. 
you would have no other choice but bring that bond proposal to the ballot and uh, one mil increase. And in this case, I don't know if there are needs, but but if there are, it could be a good time because this is a window in time opportunity when your millage is falling off for the existing debt. And that could offset any millage for a new bond. Right. So once once this if this was to all fall off and then we did need the bond, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be much more difficult to get it once it's you know, once it falls off, it's gonna be difficult for the increase. Right? That, that is correct. And I actually yeah. have some statistics at the end uh, about that. Okay. Next slide. Sure. And, and I'll, this is a chart, a millage, a stacked bar chart showing that the, difference, the millage is currently at 7.76 mils. And in this example, it goes down to 5.76 mils. And uh, the millage is at the highest level for the first several years and, and it starts to gradually decrease. Uh, so it's based on some estimates like your taxable value growth in the future and also the interest rate on the new bonds. Next slide. Yes. And uh, this is with that next example with a one mil decrease. And, and so now it's going from 7.76 to 6.76. And in this example, at least with this bond term of 27 years, three months, uh, that bond amount is 20.7 million. You could still have a one mil decrease, but shorten up that bond term and, and it might only be 18 million or something. Uh, but in your case, it does add to the bonding capacity if you go out a little longer in term. So some districts, uh, administrators, for one reason or another, don't want the term to go out very long. And so that could limit your capacity. Uh, Next slide. Yes. And, and so this is just the chart that goes with it, showing that it goes from 7.76 to 6.76 for the one mil decrease. And then this third example is the 0.76 mil decrease that brings the millage from 7.76 to seven mils. And, and like I mentioned earlier, once you're at seven mils or more, the district can participate in the school bond loan fund program. And, and that has an effect of increasing your bonding capacity. Um, and, and so in this case, you have school bond loan fund participation throughout the entire term of the bonds for this bond amount of 22.5 million. Now, if, if the district didn't have needs for that and the bond amount were maybe 21 million, it may still be at seven mils and we could decide either to shorten the bond term or, or just have the bond term be the same but have your amount of school bond loan fund participation uh, not be as long. Next slide. Yes. And, and here's the chart for that going from 7.76 to seven mils. Uh, in this example, going out nearly the entire bond term at seven mils. And, and then this last example is to continue at 7.76 with school bond loan fund participation, the bond amount 25.9 million. And, um, and there you have 7.76, nearly the entire bond term of uh, 28 years, three months. Um, and, and here's the chart to go with it. So your millage is just continuing at 7.76. That would make it a no mill increase. Uh, so those are the charts. I'll mention briefly some of the considerations when we have bonds issued, um, voted bond proposals. Sometimes districts have more than one bond proposal on the ballot at the same time. And, and that could be done because you have your, your higher needs is, is proposal A and some secondary needs is proposal B. Most of the time, school districts, when they haven't been to the ballot in, in a while for a bond issue, have one bond proposal. And then if, if there were an unsuccessful election, then they might consider splitting it up into two bond proposals for another try. Uh, but it's up to your district if you want to have one bond proposal on the ballot 
or two bond proposals on the ballot. Uh, the, another thing to consider is having bonds issued in more than one bond series. And what I what mean by that is not all the bonds are issued in the first year. And that could be done for several reasons. So if there are more than one bond series, it might still be one bond proposal, but we're not selling all the bonds in the first year. And, and that could be done for several reasons. One is that there's a law that states that with each bond series, at least 85% of the proceeds must be spent within three years and all spent within five years. And sometimes the bond project is so large, you couldn't possibly spend down 85% in the first three years. Uh, like East Lansing Schools had a bond proposal to uh, build five new elementary schools. And, and they couldn't do that logistically in one series of bonds and spend down 85% within three years. So for that reason, we had to split, sell it in series uh, like three to five years apart in order to comply with the 85% rule. But there's other reasons to have bonds issued in series. Some school districts have bonds issued in series three to five years apart, and the subsequent series are used for the purpose of refreshing technology, buses, roofs, and other projects. And, and so you might plan to have several series of bonds and, and alleviate your uh, general fund for having to cover technology or buses for, for a long period of time uh, because you had already authorized but yet not yet issued bond series that you could use four years from now to uh, use the proceeds for technology or buses, for example. Um, so some districts consider that when it comes time to sizing up a bond issue. Um, I already mentioned that the bond proposals were not to exceed bond amount. If it's in series, they'll just add the phrase issued in one or more series. But if bonds are issued in series, the timing in between series and the amount of each series can change from, um, from what the original plan was. In fact, you could have uh, more, fewer or more series, and, and that's okay, as long as the total amount of bonds is not more than the not to exceed amount in the ballot. So your original plan might be to have three bond series, but depending on what your needs are, you might decide to only have two series and, and issue the full bond amount within two series. Um, your original plan might have bonds with uh, four years in between series. But something were to happen and you have need to issue that second series a year sooner and, and you would have the flexibility of doing that uh, that too so you have some flexibility with having bonds issued in series uh, here we have the timing of elections like i said the um village is going to drop with the july 2021 20, levy and so if the district wanted to have the millage decrease from your existing debt offset the millage for a new bond issue, then the district would have two possible election dates, November of 2020 and uh, May of 2021. After that, your millage on your existing debt would have already decreased. Um, if the district wanted more than one chance at passing a bond proposal and still having the existing millage decrease falling off in 21, offsetting the millage increase on the new bonds, then, then maybe you have a vote at, in November of 2020, and if necessary, another try at it in May of 2021. Uh, I will, if you go stay on that one slide, I will mention that these bonds would have to be school by loan fund qualified, especially if you're in the school by loan fund program. And that process requires a lot, little longer lead time. And, and that means that if the district were to have a November vote, then your preliminary qualification meeting would be in July, like this coming month. 
Wait, uh, yeah, that's true. Yep, in July for a November vote. So there you go. You don't have much time. But if the district were to have a May of 2021 vote, then your meeting with the state for preliminary qualification would be in December of 2020 or January of 21. Uh, so that would definitely give you some longer lead time. Uh, and the final scope of the project would have to be decided no later than a week before your meeting with the state. So sometime uh, maybe between now and December or early January. Here are the uh, bond passage rates for the last several years. And, and this is for school bond proposals in Michigan. The overall passage rate is 70%. The passage rate for school bond proposals that have a millage increase is 58%. And this the passage rate for school bond proposals that have a no mill increase is 92%. So, so there you go. Uh, passage rate is significantly higher if it were a no mill increase. And uh, that, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Robert, for that presentation. You're welcome. Uh, and I'd be happy to come out again or run additional scenarios for you. Um, please let me, let me know or if you come up with additional questions. Okay. Um, I just had something I wanted to say. Um, since this is changing in January and July of 2021, Mr. Abdullahad has given us the opportunity to look into these, um, into the bonds. But I just want everyone to know that we are, we have not discussed uh, a, a school bond proposal. That is nothing that we have put on the table. Uh, we're gonna, like Bill said, we have to figure out what, what our needs are. But um, just for everyone listening and, and tuning in, um, we have not discussed a proposal, a bond proposal. So just want to clear the air on that. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks again. I just want everyone to know I can't change my picture. It switched to this. I have no clue why I'm stuck. So. Switch to what? What do you want to switch to? My, right now it won't show my picture. Oh. For some okay. reason. We lost I just, I just sent yeah. you, Beth, I just sent you an invite to start video, see if that works. Or I could try to put you in the waiting room okay. and let you, there you go, I see you, yep. I don't know what I did. Okay. Okay, hold on, Gloria, nope. hold on. Nope. Okay, I just asked you to start your video too, Gloria. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the board, uh, of education action items, uh, the truth of taxation. Excuse me, uh, yes. Vice President. I would like to amend the agenda. Okay. Do I have a motion to uh, amend the agenda? A second. I think you need a second. Yeah. Who seconds? Who, who I'll seconded? second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Bill Pittman. Uh, I think this is so, is it okay, like, Mr. Naughton, it's he's welcome to stay, right? But he, if he'd right. like to leave, I think we're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, RJ, if, do you have anything else for us, or you're good? I, you're good. No, I don't. But Mr. Abdullah, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hill, and thank you, thank you. members of the board. Thank, thank you. you very Thanks, much. Thanks, RJ. Too. Have a good one. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Do, do you guys want? So, do you want me to tell you why I want to amend the agenda? Is that yeah? Then vote on, and then we vote on it. Is that how we do it, Bill? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So I want to amend the agenda. Um, I want... Go ahead. Okay. I want to, the reason I want to amend the agenda is I want to recall and redo the portion of the meeting that we had on Monday, June 15th, 2020 to the portion where I was removed by the host, Mark Kimball and not allowed to return to the zoom board of education meeting. Um, I couldn't hear properly. I haven't been given access to review that meeting and the meeting notes I, that I had seen was incorrect, um, at least on one of the votes. So I wanna recall only the portion where I was removed from the meeting and was not allowed back in. 
Madam President? Yes, Ms. Castle. Um, is there even, maybe Mr. Abdullahad can answer this, is there even a vehicle or a way to even do that? Uh, repeat what you're trying to do, Beth. So I want to recall and redo the portion of the meeting on Monday, June 15th, 2020 to the portion where I was removed by the host, Mark Kimball, and not allowed to return to the Zoom Board of Education meeting. I couldn't hear the meeting properly. I haven't been given access to review that meeting. And the meeting notes that I, or the meeting notes that I had seen was incorrect, at least on one of the votes. If, if you allow me um, time to investigate this, like contact MASB to see how I, I don't know, and I don't want to give you misinformation, but if you give me time, um, first thing tomorrow morning, we could call MASB to see what our options are, and then I could get more information from you on exactly what portion, and then I could return and, and, and share the information. Okay, you would want to speak to Rod Green. He did our training for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so can I is, ask it? Can I ask if you could just hold on to that motion until I get more information, or do you guys have to vote on it already? Well, I would like to vote on it, and I, we can. I would like to vote on it, but the answer is going to be yes. We can do that. But Beth, I mean, oh, go ahead, uh, Miss President, Miss Vice President. Beth, yes. have you talked to Brad Green about this? I have talked to MASB about it, yes. And what did they tell you? They said that we can recall a portion of any meeting that we want to. And what does that mean exactly, Beth? Can you help educate I, us? I just want to recall the portion where I was kicked out of the board meeting and not allowed back in by the host, which at so that time- So when you wanna recall it, you mean we would actually go to those it. items where you were where you were not part of it and then redo the meeting what if we get a different result um possibility that we'd have a different result it, it we're just redoing it i mean you voted on every issue beth but i couldn't hear on everything so i was getting portions of it and when i seen the notes on the meeting um there was something that it said that bill voted yes on and i was pretty sure i voted and it said i voted yes and bill voted or that it, it was yeah. wrong yeah it, it was, was wrong. wrong we have to fix that one with with bill right so i'm concerned that i really did not hear all of the meeting so as a board member everyone knew i could not hear and i was constantly saying i cannot hear the meeting so I don't need to actually know what the items were that we voted on because I couldn't see it, hear it. And when I looked at the, the notes are so slim, there's hardly anything in it. And I have not been given access to look at the video, which I have emailed Sarah telling her that I needed access to it so I can see if there was something I was gonna miss. I didn't get a response. I called MASB and they said, you can recall any portion of it that I was left out of the meeting because I was actually left out of our board meeting. Um, Madam President? Yes, Ms. Castle. Beth, um, I agree with what Angel um, was putting forth to give him time to investigate. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm concerned that we're not going to come back to this discussion, which I want all of you to know that if it were you that were kicked out of the meeting by the board president, I would be voting with you to have that portion redone because I am still a part of this board. Absolutely, absolutely. I think what we're all we're saying is let Angel, um, I guess Angel, would you bring it back to the board and say what date we would yeah. revisit? Maybe the uh, next meeting, the July meeting, the July eighth. July eighth. I could go back and just look at all the all the uh, minutes, 
uh, because I did see one with Bill and we, I would sit there with uh, Sarah Muller. We'll go through the stuff, go through the minutes, and then I will, I will send you an email with the, with the report and then we could add it to the July 8th agenda. We could just put it on the agenda, uh, put, put, what we find. Put what on the agenda? Whatever, whatever things that we find incorrectly that you want to redo. So it was a, if you were forming a committee or you took a vote that you want to retake a vote on, then I could look at where the error was and, and go from there. But that's what I'm saying. There's that whole portion where I was removed from the board meeting that I could not hear everything. Okay. But weren't you doing like FaceTime with me and, and I like watching you on the screen? I was, and I could hear some and I couldn't hear some. And I was okay. telling everyone I couldn't hear some and I could hear some. And then I couldn't hear everybody speaking. So that's the other thing. I couldn't be part of a discussion because I couldn't hear everybody. Can, um, can, I, can I ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deborah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking um, about Angel getting a hold of MS, MS you know, whatever. MASB. Thank you very much. This is all so confusing to me right now. Yeah. I would think that this would be the same is if we can't redo a meeting. If she was anyone, anyone got, got ejected from a meeting, right. we couldn't redo the meeting. It's the, it's the same thing as being physically ejected from a physical meeting than to be that's, ejected from a video. Um, when, when someone is rejected from a meeting, that's because they were taken out by police or they were disruptive in a meeting. Our host kicked me and only me out of a meeting and yes. would not let me back in. And Angel knew it at the time because I was sending him screenshots of exactly what was happening. I, I think though, I, I think Beth, I think in his, um, in his Mr. Kimball's defense, he was, exactly. he was trying to act so quickly yes. to try to kick all the nonsense out. I think in his, he was acting so fast. He was just because it, I mean, I was shocked. So I could only imagine. But uh, uh, but you so I don't all think do, it, you all do understand. Pa given past history, I was the only board member kicked out, removed, and not let back in. Can I make the a only suggestion? One. Okay. Beth, Mr. The Mr. only Beth. one. I Mr. want Kim you all to hear those words. It's okay. I was the only one kicked out of the board meeting. Okay, I'm going to say one thing, and then Mr. Holcomb has the floor. Well, I, I had it. I wanted it also oh, but at the same okay. time as you, but I'll let All Mark right. go ahead. But just don't no, forget. No, no, go, go ahead, Mr. No, Pittman. No, no, please. I just you want make... to say I do not believe that Mr. Kimball did that intentionally. I don't think that he did that on purpose. That's my my opinion. Mr. Pittman, go ahead, and then Mr. Holcomb, you can be. Okay, is it all right, Mark? If I go first. Yep. You okay yes, with that? All right. So I the I don't think the point really is if you think about it whether he did it on purpose or not. I don't think that's relevant. The fact is that right. she was kicked out, right? Okay. Right. right. And the other thing that could have probably answered all this is where is the video? I mean, we we should have that up so that she could have reviewed it. She said it's been a couple of weeks. This would not even be a discussion if there was a, the video was available online or if it was sent to her. Mr. Pittman, this is uh, Miss Madam President. Can I say something to Bill? Okay, please? Mr. Abdulhad, hang on, Miss um, Barbara. Yeah. I think Mr. Abdulhad can answer that for Mr. Pittman. There you go. The video. We we can. There was there was nudity and all kinds of scenery. So we. But we, you can edit that out, can't you, Angel? No. We have no, those. You, that. Yes, we can. You can, you can't edit it out. And. But well, if you did we weren't able. Her. We'll we'll look at. We weren't able to. So we we'll try to, we'll try to look at it. There was a there was a lot of, and but and I issue. should, I should still have been given the chance to come into the office to yeah. view the portion that I have missed, and this would not have come to this really Beth, honestly. This would not be a discussion. Miss Miss Scott, Beth, did you did you see that, uh, nudity or whatever? I didn't. I but, did. Okay, I yeah, did. and I'm not I'm I just did asking, too. if you saw it once, if you had to see it again, if you saw that privately, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that whatever I missed, yes, I seen that for a split second, but like I said, I was the only board member removed and not let back in. So, Beth, it, 
So we can put this to a stop if I can actually come in and view the portion I missed. So we can skip past the nudity. I just want to see the portion that I missed and we can come back to this. Madam I don't President. know what the problem is as a board member, why we wouldn't want me to see that portion that I missed. Madam President. Hang on, Mr. Mr. Holcomb is next, Barbara. Hang on, can you hang on one moment? Sure. I understand what Beth's saying. Yeah, she should be able to see it. Um, I agree. Or can we table this until Angel that's, that's talks the, to Rod right. Green and find out where we are, and then he can call <laughs> Beth into the office and let her watch it, and then we can move on to the next board meeting. Not tomorrow, but the next one. I mean, that, that, sounds, that sounds good to me. Can I have, I have a one question then, then I'll let you barb. Angel or Sarah, maybe you can answer. Is the video still available for Ms. Scott to, to view? We, we, we don't know. We don't know if we could recover. We were attempting to recover, uh, but we'll, we'll, let me, let me try to recover one, okay. one more time and I'll give a report. We attempted once a recovery once before we couldn't. And then the zoom, like the one where I'm recording right now, when Sandy was recording, when all that stuff happened, she also lost her Zoom recording. So like, as, as you could see, there's a little dot by my name uh, under participants, it shows I'm recording. Um, okay. We had lost that Zoom uh, because Sandy was the host and she, uh, I think she got disconnected. So it's, we couldn't reference anything either. So let me, let me check with MASB with all our options. And then um, I'll definitely have a report for you before July 8th to see Mr. how you want to handle it. Okay, Sandy, Ms. Castle, Ms. Castle yeah. did you want to speak? Yes, I just wanted to make one comment, just in case there was someone that didn't know why Beth was not able to come back into the meeting. Is my understanding is once a, we, you drop someone, you cannot bring them back into the meeting. Is that correct, Angel? Yeah, she wasn't allowed to come back in because well, when you kick someone out. Well, wasn't allowed. I mean, Mark would have let her back in. He just wasn't no. the mechanics to do it. You, yeah, Zoom wouldn't let you. When you kick someone out in Zoom, she was trying. The best thing that we had was we did FaceTime. She couldn't hear. But let me find out for you so we don't Good. We don't carry on too long on, no, on the same support. topic. And I will, I will I'm give you more. We're supporting you, Beth. We're not arguing it at all. We're supporting you. And I think Mr. Abdulhad can come back with a good, good solution for us. Well, okay. I want to I make this clear that Mark was the host and Sarah was videotaping the Zoom. It was not Sandy. It was Sarah. Sarah was doing Facebook Live. And recording too as well wasn't she no sarah was not recording zoom sandy was the host sandy so, was the host Lula, i gotta unmute miss thompson can you hear me yeah yes oh okay hey uh what i want to know is did nobody record the minutes of that meeting we, we have the minutes up but there's a there's some errors uh like there, there's an error where they have bill uh, voting no, um, and he voted yes. So we have to fix that. So we have to go back and read the minutes. Okay. But and also, it, the meeting it's not they're not detailed. So I wouldn't even be able to go back and see what everybody said. They're not detailed. So I am clueless. The discussions, information I'm being withheld information from a board meeting as a board member is what I'm getting across. Madam President. Yes. I just have to make one comment, Beth. If that ever happens to any of us again, we probably should not be, we probably shouldn't vote then on an item if we don't have all the information. That just doesn't make sense to vote when you couldn't, when you didn't we, have all the information. We should have stopped the meeting. Like I said, over and over, we needed to stop that meeting until we could continue it when everyone was in as a board. All right, hindsight is one thing. Angel, I think, like Debbie said, we should move along and turn this over to you. And Beth, so, we're, not, we're in so support we, of what we want to do. We'll just see what happens with the so research. Someone make a motion then to so, table it until Angel can find out. First, we have to make. First, we have to follow through with. You have to vote, vote on this, and then if if the vote fails or passes, 
if it fails, then you could table it, or you could withdraw your. You could also withdraw your motion, and um, you could also withdraw that if you wanted to. Okay, I will withdraw my amend uh, to amend your motion, the agenda, yeah. my okay. motion. But I want to amend the agenda to have Angel get back to me tomorrow with whatever he finds out from MASB. Then, because I don't want this dropped. This can I you know. give me? Can you give me two days? Because I'm also preparing for the board meeting okay. tomorrow. Okay, so the end of the, I don't care. The end of the week, Angel. I'm just okay. saying this yep. board. Okay. Has of dropping things and I do not want this dropped. Okay. I will get so it. So what was your end. motion? I'm sorry, Beth. My motion, motion is to, my motion is to have a, Mr. Abdullahad contact MESB to see if we can re, retract the portion where I am left out of the meeting on Monday, June 15th to see if we can retract that. I get it. I'll present all the options that are given to me. Uh, I'll send that in the email before end of the day. So now someone has to second it. Do I have a second? Do I have a second, Mr. Kim, Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Holcomb seconds it, Barbara. Okay, then I'll I'm gonna move to a vote. Just give me a second. All right. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Ms. Mrs. Ott. Yes. And Barbara Castle. Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. All right. Okay. Is that it for the amendments of the agenda? We can move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to move on to the uh, Board of Education Action Items A, Truth and Taxation. Um, during the 2020-2021, the district will levy 7.6 mills on all property for purposes of debt retirement. This is the same mills levied as previous years. The district, through sound financial practices, has been able to maintain this levy without an increase for several years. The district will levy a 17.4874 mills operating level for local businesses due to the current year Headley Amendment millage. There is a reduction <coughs> fraction of 0 0.9770. If there is an additional Headley rollback next year, we may have to, to levy less than the full operating millage for the 2021 school year unless we have an early operating millage election. Uh, it's a recommended action. It's recommended that the Board of, Act of Education adopts the 2020 tax levy as presented. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Barbara. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Gloria. Any discussion? Uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Ott? Yes, Mr. Pitt. Could, could I just get uh, uh, maybe Edwina or Angel? Mm -hmm. Just explain this here. Is this, this isn't, you know, like we just talked about, it's falling off in, uh, you know, the 7.76, right, is falling off? Not until uh, July. Um, July? 20, yes, not until okay. July 2021. And we would need a, a vote in May of 2021 to keep our 7.76 mills. Now, these operating mills, it's how we operate. Um, for example, for our operating, uh, we're levying 17.4874 mills. Now, the maximum a school district could levy is 18 mills. And we're actually losing, I talked to our bond council, Matt from Troon, then we're actually losing $57,781 per year because we're not levying the full 18 mills due to the Headley rollback. So we're only, levi le we're only levying 17.48 mills operating and we are levying 7.76 mills for our debt. And that's what he talked about today. Right. The so the 7.76, should it say something in here that that only goes until 
you know, this kind of makes it sound like, you know, there's no end date to that 7.76. Am I, maybe I'm not explaining that. You know, it oh, says I during, during the 2021, the district will levy. So is that, that to me makes it sound like it's the know, rest of I, 20. Go ahead. When, when I come to you, you know, I'm presenting to you, uh, you know, uh, I'm asking the board to give me the ability to levy taxes on this upcoming year. So for the upcoming year, the 7.76 is still in place. So it's the okay upcoming school year. It. Yes, for the for the upcoming school year, you know, uh, what we'll be levying and what I'm coming to the board to ask to be levied is 7.76 mils for the current year. Yeah, yeah, I, I got that. I just yeah. want to know, should there be the July, you know, the July. I understand that. I want to make sure everyone understands that it ends June this 2021 seven the 7.76 mills for the 2021 year ends June 30th of 21. Yes, but it's, it's okay. not necessary. You are correct, but it's not necessary that I put it in there like that. Okay. 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 Anybody yep. else? Okay, Barbara. Miss Castle, can we have a roll call vote? And um, Madam President, could you read the motion, please? Is it there is a motion? It is recommended that the Board of Education adopts the 2020 tax levy as presented. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll move to vote then. Uh, Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Ms. Scott? You're muted, Beth. Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mrs. Ott, did I ask you already? No, but yes, I do. I do vote yes. And Barbara Cast votes yes as well. So motion carries 6 0. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the cash flow borrowing. Um, documents to support our cash flow borrowing has been added for your review and approval. I just want to do a side note that um, we are borrowing less than half of what they borrowed last year and the previous years. So this is, uh, when I, well, we'll do it on discussion. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the cash flow borrowing requested as listed with the Board of Education packet. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Ms. Thompson, do I have a second? I'll make a second. Okay, Ms. Castle. Discussion? Everybody's okay with this? Yes, yeah, if I could, what, okay, so I'm just trying to find, what is the amount? You said it's half of what it was last year in the yes. previous year. It's what is the amount? It's uh, $1,514,000. Okay. So $1.5 dollars. That's what we're asking for. Okay. Um, generally, in September, we don't get a state aid payment, so right. it generally helps with the cash flow. Of right, it carries system. us over. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other I'm comments? Good. No. Or questions? Ms. Castle, can I have a roll call vote, please? You sure can. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. And Barbara Castle says yes. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you, Ms. Castle. Uh, now we have a PowerPoint. Uh, Dr. Hill, uh, do you want to go ahead with your PowerPoint, please? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Angel? Yep, I got it. Hold on one second. Yep, I, I, I'm, I'm trying. Just give me one second to get there. Yep, I'm just going to uh, prompt us up. So basically, you know, according to the Uniform Budgeting and Accounting Act, it mandates that a, a budgeting system for public entities of Michigan, i.e. the school district. So I'm coming to you for approval for our amended 2019-2020 uh, budget, as well as... Um, 
an estimated operating, operating budget for the 2021 school year. This is a budget. This is what I am coming to the board to ask that you approve it so that the school district can continue to operate. Now, um, everyone could see the screen. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Angel, you can go to the next slide, please. Okay. So, and looking at our uh, uh, the pre presented 2019 2020 final budget amendment. Um, we have $21,652,795 in revenue. And it's, it's different from our last budget amendment of $15,238,661. And basically because we received a supplemental payment from the state in the amount of $5.7 million. So normally, um, and, and that was a, a nice grace from the state because we lost our virtual program and we would have lost those, the revenue tied to those FTEs that we lost with the program, but the state decided to allow us to pay that money back to them over a five-year period. So we basically have to give the state back about $1.2 million a year at this point now for the next four years. So that's why we have a big difference there. And then our expenditures, I'm asking for an operating budget at this time to close out the year. Uh, we still have some payrolls left to do. Um, we gotta get through this summer. So I'm asking for $16,422,894 to continue to operate pay the final payrolls that we still have to pay for the high school. We'll, we still have uh, payrolls that will go into August. For the mil middle and elementary school, their final payrolls are in July. So I'm asking for this amount to continue to, and then we still have some, some um, expenses that we have to wrap up for the, for the rest, rest of the year. So this is what I'm asking for. Our fund balance as of June 30, 2019, as you all know, was $168,424. Edwina, can I say something? Yes, you may. Uh, trustees and, and Madam Vice uh, President, right now, today, we're only at 15 million. We're giving ourselves a million for buffer of expenditures. We don't anticipate using all that money, uh, but that buffer allows us to have no findings. So once we finish off the, the fiscal year, we will give you, um, once we do our audit, you'll have a true accurate picture of total expenditures. We anticipate total expenditures to be less than 16 million, but we're giving us ourselves a little buffer there. So that's why you see 16.4 million. But to date, we've only spent 15 million as as we ran it so we're just giving ourselves buffer so this number you'll see that it will it will uh the 16 million four hundred twenty two thousand it will we will give you a final number once we do the audit report mm -hmm. sorry edwina okay thank you angel mm -hmm. okay so you know in our last audit as of june 30 2019 our fund balance was only $168,424. And that, that's not considering any of the other funds. I'm just talking about the general fund. So the projected fund balance is about, we're projecting a fund balance after the audit to be around 5.3 million, 5,398,325. But like Angel said, you know, we, it, you know, we project it to be a little bit higher, but you'll know when we do all of our final expenses and things of that nature, this budget is so that we can operate and close out the end of the year. And, and if I could if I say one more thing, mm -hmm. this, we were not miracle workers and pulled $5 million in a fund balance that's not there. We are figuring that 4.7, 4.8 million that we have remaining from mm -hmm. the supplemental payment that we have, yes. that is in there. So if you remove that, if you remove that, we have added about 
400,000 to our fund balance from our own monies that we've saved over, the, uh, over this fiscal year. The rest came from the supplemental. That's why you see an inflated amount of 5.398 million. But if we look at it, this, not all this money is ours because we are making uh, payment plans of, of about $110,000 every month um, to pay back that supplemental. But we have, we have tripled our fund balance uh, on our own. We removed the 4.7 remaining or 4.8 million remaining. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay. Okay, Angel. Um, next, next slide. slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more slide. We're gonna roll into uh, operating for 2021. Uh, so I just want to share some assumptions with you before we look at the budget. Um, as you all know, um, we're in a situation where we don't exactly know how the state are, is going to treat the districts. Um, they have assessed uh, a $1.86 billion um, expense to the school district, but we don't know uh, what our share or portion will be. They say 67% of that expense, that billion dollar expense, uh, has been assigned to school districts and then the other to community colleges and universities. So, you know, um, if we get a bailout from the federal government, then, you know, that would be wonderful for school districts. And so if everybody could write to congressmen and things of that nature and support the schools, like I know everybody's doing, you know, maybe things won't be so egregious. So we had to make some assumptions in our revenue for our operating budget for the 2021 year. Uh, revenue is projected to include a reduction in our foundation allowance in the amount of $500. Our current foundation allowance is $8,111 per student. And so we're projecting a $500 reduction. So we're projecting our foundation allowance to be a, about $7,611 per student. And we are also projecting our fall student count to be at about 1050. Right now, our general uh, student population is about 1060, you know, um, seniors going out, kindergartners coming in, and we're just hoping to retain all of our beautiful, wonderful families. But we have a total of 1123 because our special education are separated from this presentation, just to be clear. So we're not down that big amount. No. We have 1123 students, but when they're doing budgets, they separate our special education students from our general education students for funding purposes. Yes. So our total number is 1123. Yes. Sorry, and, go ahead. Keep going. And we have about a little over 45 point. We have a little bit over 45 uh, special ed FTEs. So, again, another assumption. Revenue has been adjusted accordingly to confirm grant award amounts provided by the Michigan Department of Ed for 2021. And then expenses are... They're, they're a little higher right now uh, due to the in increase in the cost of benefits for the upcoming year, as well as scheduled raises for some bargaining groups. You know, so for our teachers, if they are, you know, able to still uh, receive steps, they're receiving those, you know. So, you know, that is in these numbers. So if you look at my 2020 column, that's your, uh, it's on my right, the 2020-2021 original budget, I'm projecting our revenues to be at, at about 14727906 Quite a big drop. Remember, we got that $5.7 million supplemental payment, and we're taking a $500 reduction in our upcoming revenue. And the minute that we know more information in terms of how school districts will be treated in the upcoming year, we have our account coming up in October, and then um, it takes generally takes the state until about November or December to true up our numbers and to really let us know uh, what our true foundation allowance will be. At that time, we will come back to the board and true up our operating budget at that time. But today, this is the best scenario 
that we, I'm asking that you allow us to operate with until we get more information from the state. So I'm projecting our expenditures to be at $15,382,020. So net operations, you see, still a projected fund balance as of 2020. Uh, you seen from the other slide is at 15.3 million and our projected fund balance from there is at about four, $4,744,211. So this is what I'm pre presenting to the board. You know, I'm asking that you allow us to operate with these, these, the, these projections and then we'll, we'll know more and the audit, and then for the upcoming year, when the state finalizes their budget, they'll let us know how exactly they're gonna handle us. And just some more information for you to help offset some of the costs the district will incur due to the pandemic. The district was allocated $322,000, $322,372 and ESSER funding from the Michigan Department of Ed. You know, all school districts were allocated that amount of money. From the CARES Act. From the CARES Act. Yeah, from the CARES Act. You know, and so, you know, this money doesn't, um, that money does not um, expire until September of 2021, even though, you know, we're applying to use it right now because, you know, of the needs, you know. Is that, is that accounted for in our, our revenues for the 2021 or? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes, it is. It's, it's actually accounted in our revenues for 1920 as well as 2021. Okay. Because right. depending on, you know, um, the way that it works is you can apply for it now. The state is turning it around really quickly. And, you know, we have some flexibility in terms of, you know, what we can spend that money on. So I put it in both places. And that's my presentation. Does anyone, you know, and the board, you know, was provided financial information ahead of time. And I met with the majority of the board members to discuss the budget. So at this time, uh, that was my presentation. You're muted, uh, Deb. Thank you, uh, Dr. Madam, Hill. Madam Vice President, I'm sorry. <laughs> <I said that. laughs> Thanks again, Dr. Hill. Mm -hmm. So um, we have an action item, the 2019-2020 the final budget amendment has been submitted for your review and approval. Uh, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the 2019-2020 final budget amendment. Do I have a motion to approve I'll this? I'll second. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Thompson. Thank you, I'll Ms. Second. Scott. Okay, any discussion? Uh, Mr. Zott? Yes, Mr. Pittman? Yeah, the only thing I wanna say is, I don't know that we've ever approved a budget showing expenditures already budgeted to be more than our revenue. And I say that understanding that, um, you know, this is a kind of a different, um, I don't know, different deal with this, virus going on and whatever so right. yeah um we better all hope for some uh some help from i don't know about the federal government. government but we need to our local when i say local i mean our state government to you know to do their job too right because we're biting into our fund balance a bit and yeah and in order to decrease that you know you would have to cut some staff to bring it under. Well, that's not always well, the answer. It's not always no. putting programs and staff. It's there's no. Yeah. You know. <laughs> can I can I say something? We're, we're, yeah. um, we we so we're very creative and we we always make things work. Um, yes, we're lean, uh, but I believe that we have everybody and all the tools that we need to make it work. Um, there's a lot. There's always fat to trim before. Um, because um, uh, investing in, in, in employees is costly. So you don't want to just cut to be cutting right. because it takes a lot to train. Right. So what, what I told Dr. Hill is, even though right now it's projected as a deficit, a, a budget is a living document. So we will right. be presenting stuff as things come about. We yes. are not looking 
uh, to cut at this time. We're not looking to do anything. We are just sitting and waiting like everyone else, um, hoping for federal government um, and, and hoping for a little bit of miracles. Uh, but everybody in the state is in the same boat as we are. So right. Just to kind of ease everyone's mind, we are not looking um, at cutting anything right now. No. Mr. Abdulhad, or maybe yeah. uh, Dr. you can answer my question. Uh -huh. If we approve the um, final, the budget amendment for, for 1920, and you don't use all the money that you allocated for expenditures, right. yeah. that, that money comes back. Exactly. Into the exactly. It goes and that will the alter the 2021, balance. too. Okay. That will also change a lot of things. Again, we're giving ourselves a million for buffer. We are not going to even get close to that. Yeah. Uh, but we're just giving that buffer. And you you should be getting uh, more updates from us because as we get information and uh, budgets change, because here's another scenario. If the state of Michigan says, you know what? We're not going to give you more, but we're not going to cut the 500. Well, that mm -hmm. 500 equates to a half a million dollars for us. Well, there goes that, that budget changes automatically. So as we get information, we will share that, then we will update and modify the budget and you will get firsthand um, um, uh, preview of the budget. It should be seen, presented to you guys more than just three times a year. And that's what our goal this year is to present that budget to you more, more um, um, often so you can see it. As yeah. we have changes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do, are there any other comments or questions for uh, Ms. Hill or uh, Mr. Abdulha regarding the amended budget for 1920? Okay, so uh, Ms. Castle, can we do a roll call vote, please? Barb, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move to a vote. Miss Scott. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Miss Thompson. Yes. Ms. Mizat. Yes. And Miss Castle. Yes. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. you okay. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Thank you. Okay. Now, doc, will Dr. Hill be um, on the next item? Will Dr. Hill be doing the 2021 budget? She already did it. Uh, okay. She presented it, so you just have okay. to do that. All right, so we just have to, as recommended, that the Board of Education approve the 20, 2021 original budget. I have a motion. I'm a Was that Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Holcomb. Any discussion? No discussion. Ms. Castle, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, you can. All right, Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Ms. Castle. Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the uh, agenda is the 20, 2020 2021 Board of Education meeting dates. I would like to table this if we could. The reason is, let me tell you the reason why is because there's three dates on here that is in line with the uh, City of Madison Heights meetings. September 14th, January 11th, and June 14th. Okay. Okay. So Beth has made a motion, uh, Ms. Scott has made a motion to table this until our next meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Mr. Pittman. Any discussion? Ms. Ms. Vice President? Yes, Ms. Castle. Um, by tabling it then, Ange Mr. Abdulahad, would you take into consideration what Beth's input was, Ms. Scott's input, and then come back with another 
calendar for us? Is that how this would yes. work? Yes. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and look at uh, typically in your bylaws, it says the first Monday, but there, right. there's some, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, connect with Miss Scott to see what dates and then I could present it either tomorrow, even though it's a little bit late because I already sent out the uh, um, agenda for tomorrow. I could do it on the July 8th, I believe, this, or July yeah, 6th. Say, yeah, okay, 6th. July 6th board meeting uh, and present it to you all then if you're okay with that. 6th. Beth, oh. is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. It's only... It's only three dates, Angel. Uh, uh, what I, are the dates? Because we could we could change them now, and then you guys could mo, uh, vote okay. on it with the changes, and we could write them down. Okay, uh, September fourteenth is a city oh, meeting. Right, be... January twenty twenty one, and June fourteenth, twenty twenty one. September fourteenth. January 11, and what was the last one? June 14, 2021. Okay, so can I, I, I think it'd be, I'm, I'm okay if you guys table it, let me mess around with those dates and present it again to you all, uh, either um, July 6, if you're okay, or if I have enough time to add to the agenda tomorrow. Uh, let me play around with those dates. If you're okay with those two options for me. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. So we're going I'm... to so go ahead with the motion to table it. And um, Angel, you'll get back with us on the 6th of July or, or yeah. possibly tomorrow. Yeah. Six of either, July. either. Yeah. I okay. think we have to, I think we have to vote on tabling it. Yes. Right. Yeah. We're going to move to we're a vote. Just, we're just doing discussion. Okay. Uh, Ms. Castle. Can we have a roll call vote, please? For sure. Mr. Okay. Pittman. Yes. Ms. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Mr. Holcomb. Yes. Mrs. Ott. Yes. Ms. Castle. Yes. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. Thank um, you, Ms. Castle. Uh, okay. Next on our agenda is board discussion. Does anybody have anything they want to discuss? Yeah, um, I was just, you guys just brought up the next board meeting is the 6th. Now we're having one today, tomorrow, and then next week. Can we move that a week? Mr. Holcomb, are you going to be out of town? Is that? Yeah, I'm going to be on vacation. I'm good with that. I mean, I, it's kind of silly to have three right, right in a row anyway, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, are we having a discussion on this, or? Well, I'm just asking a question. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm also. Why are we having one tomorrow? Why does it need to be a special meeting? On, is there the things that are on there have to be done by the thirtieth or something? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So then that would just give Angel, uh, Mr. Abdulha, <clears throat> um, some other dates to throw around instead of having it on the sixth. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's odd the 29th and the 30th because we moved the budget and things of that nature. Um, but don't forget, Mr. Holcomb, we also have check registries that we don't release until the Board of Ed votes on it. So, but but I could look at, I could look at if it's not the 6th, the next one would be on the 13th of July. I could send you all an email um, if you want it to be on the 13th of July. I mean, that'll work for me, but I, I mean, it's up to you guys. I, I can miss one board meeting. You know, it's no biggie. I'm okay with July 13th. Okay. I I'll just be have okay a question with that. For, for, Ms., for, for Dr. Hill. Would that um, influence the check registry in any way, but the essentials are still being paid, right? She's muted. You're muted. Okay. Yeah. If we do it on the 13th, I think that'd be great. Okay. 
Okay, I'll send out an, an e email and we'll update the agenda. Uh, the I, I, I think we have to website. vote on that. I think we need to make that, we need to amend the agenda and vote on that. Okay, so Mr. Holcomb, you want to amend the agenda? Then yeah. The board make, meeting will be July 13th. Yep, make a motion for that. I'll second it. Okay. Okay, roll call vote, uh, Ms. Castle. Okay, there's no more discussion, correct? Okay, we'll take a vote. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Mr. Pittman? Yes. Mrs. Ott? Yes. Ms. Castle? Yes. Motion carries 6-0. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Madam Vice President, I, we're, we're going to move them to 7 p.m., just because I know that I was sending them out to 5 p.m. So I'll, I'll going forward the meetings, I'll make them 7 p.m. just like your normal ones, even, even though it's virtual to okay. accommodate everyone. Starting in July, correct? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Okay, any more Are board we... discussion? Um, I, I would like to, um, probably no one's gonna wanna hear this, but because um, I know we don't normally speak to the public but uh mr marr came forward uh with what he was saying about um board presence ties with century 21 um or do we want to discuss that anybody want to discuss that at all mr abdul uh mr abdul can you can you um elaborate on that you were in with mr kimball i believe uh, I, I don't know if there is um, an accusation that there was wrongdoing. Um, uh, you were there. I mean, I, I, I was there. We purchased the land. I, I met with Mr. Campbell. Me and Dr. Hill was, were there. We met and, and then with the owner of the land, we did the paperwork and then made copies and then we left. Um, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm... I didn't know. from Madison Heights originally I don't know right. relationships or uh, connections well, but yeah. um, understanding that a small town uh, people are gonna they're gonna know each other one's gonna know I don't I don't know I don't know the full depth and breadth of the allegations so I, I can't comment on anything um, uh, but all I know is that we did things right the district did things on the up and up I, I had Edwina with me Right. We did all the paperwork uh, legit, mm -hmm. legally, um, you know, and it was unsolicited. Um, I, I still remember when I was driving Mr. Kimball to show him the, um, the aviation plot mm -hmm. at Madison Elementary. That's how this whole thing came about. And I remember um, uh, previous superintendent had discussed purchasing more land. And I'm like, oh, look, that land is for sale. I wonder how much it is. I mean, that's just how the, the thing was innocent. It started out with me showing the aviation plot right off of, um, the street where Madison Elementary is. And it was totally innocent. Um, does it answer some of the, you know, um, conspiracy? I, I, I don't think if people are going to believe conspiracy, they're going to continue it. I just know that I initiated that um i showed mr kimball the aviation plot i drove by and i seen that and i was curious because a week previous prior to that miss provenzola was complaining that she didn't have a lot of playing field for the elementary kids and so i was just exploring ideas i it didn't you know yeah if i can i speak on this i think mr mr kimball should or will answer whatever questions and they the one of the things that you know a couple items that i think about with this is something about a purchase order that was signed i want to i'd like you know to know more about that i don't know what mr meyer was alluding to but i would like to know more about that and the other thing is is that we have this committee that we formed for uh getting commercial brokers together um i think we did it last meeting for Edison mm -hmm. and Mr. Kimball has recommended that Mr. Campbell be one of the 
brokers involved in that. So I'd just like to get this done and you know talked about before we get him involved in something else that um, he probably maybe shouldn't be, may or may not. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Holcomb. What, uh, what, what was the original asking price for that land, Mr. Abdullah? Um, I believe 60,000. I, I believe they had marked it down and they got it down to 60,000, but don't misquote me. I, I'm just, I'm guessing at this point. All right, and what did we pay for it? Um, 30. 30 plus, plus some fees, I think it equates About to 35,000. All together. It was a little bit over 35,000. All right, yeah. so it's from 60 to 35, I don't see how. Well, but it, but Mark, what, just to, to what, be honest, it, 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 sat, it sat at 60 for a long time, for 10 months or something. So. I thought originally I heard it was 125. It was, it, pro it was probably okay. two or three years ago. Okay. But it, it sat for many months at, at 60. All right, so from 125 to 60, and we got it for 30. I, I don't see what kind of dirty handed stuff was there, but I don't know. Um, Bill, can I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Holcomb. Uh, Bill, right. what, yep. were, what, what were you saying about um, Larry Campbell? What What is that about? Larry Campbell is well, doing what? At the last meeting, maybe this was part you didn't hear, we were going to set up a committee where I would be a part of it. I, and I think we asked uh, Dr. Hill to be a part of it. And I think Mark, and I don't know if there's gonna be another board member, but we were going to get three commercial brokers together to put presentations together on how they would market or what they think, um, you know, Edison might be worth and how, you know, what fees and just whatever, put a, put together a, a sales pitch for us if they wanted to sell it. And Mark asked if, uh, or mentioned that he'd like Larry Campbell to be one of the brokers if we do that. Is that the Century 21 building on 12 Mile? It's Century 21 Campbell, yes. Okay, so there is, um, there is, so there would be, um, I don't know what the word is called. There would be some um, discrepancy that uh, Mark would not either be on that committee or Century 21 would not be allowed to be part of that because uh, Barb and I both met at Century 21, beginning of the board, um, for an orientation of some sort. Didn't we, Barb? I believe we did, Beth. Um, and I, I, think, know that, I know there's a relationship there with Mark and Century 21, but to say that Mark Kimball is benefiting personally. No, nope, nobody said that. I didn't I'm say that. Saying, I'm just saying, if that's what the thoughts might be out there that possibly Mark has benefited or whatever, I, I would think that Mark would not do that. That's just my opinion. Madam President or Vice yes, President Ms. Thompson. My thought is if if there's a I don't know what your word to use, if if there's some sort of conflict question we're using, then we simply because they would have to bid that out, we simply wouldn't let them be part of our bidding process. Well, we can't stop them from being part of the bidding process, but we don't have to choose them as a right. real estate company to do work for us. We simply right. don't choose them. If or there's a question there. I don't personally think okay. there was. I've seen all the invoices. I've seen all the paperwork. I don't believe Mr. Kimball profited it anywhere. Well, I think it's let, all let, up on the up. Uh, and I'm just going to say this. I sat on this board for... for many years before you guys got here. And I don't think Al Morrison or Randy Speck or anyone else profited from anything from emergency restoration, but they but, were accused of it. But that's not, that's not the subject we have right on, on hand. Yes, right it now, is. Mr. Well, no, it's not, it is the subject we have right now because you guys feel that Mr. Kimball wouldn't do that. I'm not saying I do, but I feel that uh, Al Morrison and Mr. Speck wouldn't do that, but it's something that needs to be looked into. Madam oh, Vice President. Madam Vice President, call to question. Uh, can I, 
can I say something? Yes, Mr. Um, I, I think I think um, the perception is what Mr. Pittman is addressing. Exactly. The, uh, whether the relationship exists or not, right. what perception are we giving off uh, right. to the public? And Correct. so, um, so I, I, I would just throw an idea. If you're going to form a committee, you either the trustees pick the members of the committee that are comfortable with a fair and equitable process, uh, because that would remove any ambiguity from from Absolutely. from that. And you, it, it might be on the up and up. Everything might be kosher and everything might be good, but it removes any ambiguity and any you know. Um, Perception. So form a committee uh, that th this board is comfortable with. And if, if whoever gets the uh, right to, you know, sell the thing, it would be by th the vote of this board. Then that removes anything else from conflict. And then you can leave it at that. Well, I said I'd work with Mr. Pittman on it. That's, true. That's right. You were the other one. Yep. yep. Well, and, and to be fair, um, I know I don't want to be accused as a board member, and I'm sure none of you want to be in the position the last board was in. So I'm not saying Mark would do it or not. I'm just saying that if, if the public is coming forward, and it has been on several occasions, we, Mark may have said that he doesn't have any ties to, that, to them, but it's proven that he does have ties. He used to work there. Barb and I met there for an orientation. He had the keys. He has a relationship, so he should take himself out of the equation. Okay. I'd like to speak. Um, I don't believe Mr. Holcomb, I mean, Mr. Kimball has ever denied having a relationship. And I thought, it, I was under the impression that the district got a deal because of his relationship with uh, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> that was but my perception. If, yeah, if it poses you guys a problem. You should be careful what you're saying right now, honestly. Yeah, I think so too. You should let I think, him speak. Yeah, let Mark speak because that's not your you're saying it's that my opinion and I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs> you are. Okay. All right. You are. So, but Mr. I'm Abdul saying, Ahad I, and Dr. Yeah. Hill were there with him. Anyway, we'll let him answer these questions. Um, yeah. whether well, not, I, I yeah. think the best well, your best approach is to decide as a board who you want as members of the committee I, and let the committee Pick their uh, brokers and let them present them to you. That Correct. way, there's no finger fingers pointing at each other or anyone else. Let the committee present. Uh, Mr. Pittman has experience in real estate. Uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, Edwina has experience in finance. I cannot be involved because I have too much going on with uh, trying to get back to school. So, okay. forms. Get another person and let that committee present to this board. Mr. Their recommendation. Pittman. Mr. Pittman, did you guys form, form a committee last meeting? Yeah. Okay. It was Mr. Was Holcomb, myself, Mr. Kimball, and then we, last week we asked uh, Dr. Hill to join us. Okay. I just, I thought we had formed a committee already. Okay. I just said that because if your issue is with relationship or dealing with arm's length uh, dealing, then you might want to revisit that committee if your concern is the relationship. That's all. That's why I brought that up again. Any other board comments? Um, board discussion? Yeah, uh, I would like to ask Mr. Abdullahad if he has any update for us and, and whoever's listening out there on uh, the start of school next year. What the, you know, have you guys made any with your task force, any headway on what the plan is or? Uh, Mr. Pittman, we, um, We've met a few times. Uh, we are looking at um, uh, models. Um, right now we're in phase four. So to move to a blended model uh, would require us to be in phase five. Um, um, the state took a step backwards in, in COVID so that we remained in phase four. Right now we are exploring a blended model, um, a hybrid like an A, B, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, with every other Fridays. <laughs> so on any giving 10-day cycle, students might attend school five uh, brick-and-mortar days with um, teachers, and then the other days on a new virtual platform that we are going to present to you all 
um, okay. tomorrow. Um, we don't know with transportation. Um, we don't know with food. We don't know with um, spacing. Uh, we are waiting. Everyone is waiting. Everyone that's producing, even Oakland schools produce a draft, but really everyone's waiting on the governor's task force on yeah. June 30th. Uh, we are scheduled to meet two days after that in this task force to take what the governor's task force produces and blend it with ours. But really what drives everything is as a, as a state, are we going to follow the CDC guidelines of spacing and all of that, because that is a huge change if we have to do six feet or not six feet. Do the kids wear masks or they don't wear masks? Uh, it's a huge uh, shift between those options. So we're all sitting and waiting right now. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I had more for you, Mr. Pittman, but That's I- That's all right, I, I just- Yeah. Mr. Go ahead. Have we heard anything about the shields that we talked about? We're, we're still waiting. I think um, um, the person that I was working with was on here earlier. Uh, we're waiting to see if Ford uh, secures that. But if you follow CDC guidelines, shields themselves are not good enough. So we have to wear the mask and the shield. And can you imagine a seven-year-old no. wearing a mask all day? And then it's just not going to work. Anyone that's no. got kids, it's not going to work but that's what we're stuck dealing with right now and then i'm hoping for miracles so i'm sorry i don't have more mr pittman all right um moving on to board comments um who would like to start board comments anyone i have comments as okay. always go ahead Ms. Uh, Scott. okay i want to do a special shout out to the Manhattan high school football for their hard work weeding and cleaning up books and flower beds. As you all can see in that picture, social distancing, masks, um, all, all of them made, uh, made me and Mr. Abdulhad and their parents proud. They worked hard, fast, they did all the flower beds, um, tried to get into the garden to do the best they can. Thanks to Mr. Holcomb and uh, his wife, they additionally did more work to the garden. It looks beautiful. Um, I want to thank uh, the football coaches, um, Ron Scott and uh, Deron Hood, and the families for helping as well. Thank you to Ron for the donuts and cookies, and Mr. Abdulahad for the Gatorade, and both of them for supplying the team with pizzas. They loved it, and they loved seeing each other. It was a blast. I also wanted to mention to the public that uh, we will have four board of education seats up for election in november you must have your paperwork in by july 1st or july 21st with your signatures that are needed so any parents out there interested july 21st is your deadline that's all thank you thank you miss scott um i i had a comment but it's written on my ipad and i'm using my ipad so i'm going to pass tonight um mr holcomb do you have uh, any board comments yeah, I want to talk about that bond issue here coming up. Um, it's anybody that knows me knows that I fought with the people in the city council on that about taxes. Uh, I'm not a tax. I don't like paying taxes. I like it as little as possible. So I would like a break, but it ain't up to me. It's up to the people in the district what they want. So if we if we move this way, I'm going to say let's wait until February and let's ask them meet with them do a town hall meet with you people and see what you want. If we want to keep the way it is, if you want to lower two, two mills or four mills, we'll wait to hear from you and you decide what we want. Because I, like I said, I don't like paying taxes, a little or the better, but uh, it ain't all, it ain't up to me. It's up to you. And so Beth, thank you and the football players for taking care of the flower beds and your daughter and her husband for to work on a garden and you and uh bill let's let's do whatever we got to do with this property and thank you all for being here on the zoom and that's that's it okay thank you mr holcomb um miss thompson 
Yeah, I have a couple of remarks. First of all, I'd like to thank um, Angel and Edwina for all the hard work on the budget. Um, everybody who got it can tell it, it was extreme. Um, but it's going to work out. It's, it's light, but we're going to make it work. Um, but I'd also like to um, thank everybody who worked on the garden, the staff during the COVID and all that. All that aside, which was wonderful work, I'd like to address some of the remarks that were made by another board member concerning the way we voted last time. And I want to refer to bylaw 0145, which reads, the Board of Education's intent is to provide an environment that fosters the respect and dignity of each person. To this end, the board is committed to maintaining an environment free of harassment and intimidation. The remarks that were made were definitely harassing and intimidating. Each of our BOE members, we have our own vote. I think hard and long on every one of my votes. Nobody tells me how to vote. If you don't believe that, you can ask some of the other board members that I talk to on a regular basis. Each BOE, BOE member should have respect from the other members. I didn't feel respected that night. I have never made a remark about the way anybody else has voted. I think that we should have a modicum of respect for each other, not chastise how we voted. And I want a small amount of respect for each other. And I don't think that's a lot to ask. To chastise us and tell us how disgusted this person was in the way we voted. I'm sorry, it's the way I felt, it's the way I voted. Thank you. Nothing from me. Deb, you're muted. Madam Vice President, you're I'm muted. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ms. Castle, do you have any board comments? Just a few. I'd like again, as always, to thank everybody that works so hard for our district. I want to thank everybody that's worked on our gardens and best team that cleaned up the front of Wilkinson and just all the efforts that people put forth. Edwina and Angel and your staff, thank you for the hard work on the budget. I do want to echo Ms. Thompson's remarks. Um, we need to be mindful that we aren't always going to agree with each other, but we are, we're voting, we're doing the best we can. And I would hope that I would never make any of you feel that you, that uh, feel bad about how you voted. I respect all of you. And I would hope that I would gain that, get the same respect back. I have never spoke about any of you on social media. I've never said anything bad about anybody. I've never chastised anyone for voting the way they did. So I'd like to echo Ms. Thompson's remarks. And let's, let's, do, let's do better, guys. Let's just do better. We're all here for the same reason. That's all. Thank you. OK, with that being said, can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Anyone? I'll motion. I'll motion. Beth? Uh, Ms. Scott made a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everybody.